It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. After the death of George Floyd, there has been many attempts by companies and the government to push this idea of critical race theory. We've already seen the effects through many businesses and companies. We've seen the effects already with Cartoon Network and everything else. And so naturally, of course, the next progression to push this idea of anti-racism is obviously mathematics. Because you see, mathematics too is also very much racist. And so for this video, we're going to take a look at a document that was actually uploaded online to give you guys an idea on how they want to teach students with math and anti-racism. A pathway to equitable math instruction, dismantling racism in mathematics instructions, exercises for educators to reflect on their own biases to transform their instructional practice. Before we get into this whole entire document, you're probably thinking to yourself, as I am right now, what does racism have to do with mathematics? Because to me at least, when I think about mathematics, I think about problem solving. Like I think about addition, multiplication, subtraction, algebra, all that kind of jazz. But for some strange reason, if somebody, I guess, you know, does something bad or get the problem wrong, then it's obviously proof of racism. So, Let's continue on. This tool provides teachers an opportunity to examine their actions, beliefs, and value around teaching mathematics. The framework for destruction racism in mathematics offers essential characteristics of anti-racist math educators and critical approaches to dismantling white supremacy in math classrooms by visualizing the toxic characteristic of white supremacy culture with respect to math. Building on the framework, Teachers engage with critical practice in order to shift their instructional beliefs and practices towards anti-racist math education. By centering anti-racism, we model how to be anti-racist math educators with accountabilities. That made absolutely no sense to me. A culture that enforced white supremacy. Well, yeah, if we return back to like, you know, the Jim Crow era, as well as like, you know, the time of so like slavery, sure, you could say that the culture did in fact, you know, enforce like white supremacy for the United States. But at the same time though, like, um, I don't understand like, even though the past had a really bad and racist history, how that's actually proof of math also being racist. Because to me at least, obviously during the past, there were segregated schools, and so naturally, of course, the subjects that black and white students had to face, they had to do it in separate schools before they started to integrate into, like, you know, the same sort of schools. And nowadays, people want to, you know, segregate again, which is kind of funny because all the civil rights, you know, activists want to, you know, have people together, but it's like the opposite nowadays. But anyway, I fail to see how past actions actually affect how math itself is racist. Sure, that's proof that the culture was in fact racist, but it does not mean that math itself in of itself is actually racist. Dismantling white supremacy in math classrooms. We see white supremacy culture show up in the mathematics classrooms, even as we carry out our professional responsibility, outlined in the California Standards for the Teaching Profession, CSTP. Using CSTP as a framework, we see white supremacy culture in the mathematic classrooms can show up when you engage in supporting all students in learning. The focus is on getting the right answer. Independent practice is value over teamwork or collaboration. Real world mathematics is value over math in the real world. Students are tracked into courses, pathways, and within the classroom. Participation is the structure and reinforce the dominant way of being. The thing about getting the right answer is kind of interesting because this does not just apply to just black students, you know. This also applies to pretty much anybody because math itself does not really discriminate on the right or wrong answer. Two plus two would always be four. One plus one will always be two. And it's like those kind of things are universal for all students. And so naturally, of course, this does not discriminate one set of students. 
as far as applying mathematics into the real world, that again is not just limited to black students. Because of course there are different pathways where you need to have math to survive. For example, the idea of paying your house bills, the idea of of course trying to, you know, work at your own personal business and having at least basic mathematics skills to do your stuff. There's also the computing world where basically programmers use mathematics to code and all that kind of jazz. So technology as well as your own personal life in terms of the bills and also your work life depend largely on mathematics. So this kind of stuff, again, is not exclusive to black people, not exclusive to minorities. This is pretty much a universal thing. Teachers are in culture in the USA teach mathematics the way they learn it. Exceptions are not met. Addressing mistakes. Teachers are teachers and students are learners. Math is taught in a linear fashion and skills are taught subsequently without consideration of prerequisite knowledge. Superficial curriculum changes are offered to address culturally relevant and practice state standard guide learning in the classroom. Professioning is preferred over conceptual knowledge. Good math teaching is considered an antidote for mathematics and equality for black Latinx. Really? You guys actually have to freaking use Latinx. It's Latino, you dumbasses. Latinx and uh, let me see right there. And multilingual students. Rigor is expressed only in difficulty. I do, we do, you do is the format of the class. Showing their work is actually, you know, encouraged for just pretty much any student. Because no matter who you are, you actually have to show your work. Now sometimes, like kids nowadays, they use calculators to do their tests, to do like, you know, math problems. Because nowadays, we have become super, you know, dependent on calculators. And also, the idea of acquiring language and, of course, being math proficient, I can tell you right now that's not true. Because I speak English, Spanish is my second language, and I'm not good at mathematics at all. So, I think, I don't, I don't know where you get this idea that if you speak another language, that somehow you're absolutely good at mathematics. And I'm going to look at the rest of the list right here. Just give me one moment right here. Let's see, teachers are entrenched to teach like mathematics the way they learn in the United States. Yeah, that's true, that's pretty much true. And the other ones that are listed are stuff like, you know, fluency is, you know, prefer over conceptual knowledge. I think that's pretty true. Because sometimes, of course, like in the educational system, we also tend to actually, you know, depend largely on getting the grades watered than to like, you know, retain the knowledge. Because it's entirely possible nowadays that basically students could just, you know, retain the knowledge temporarily to pass a test or whatever and not actually learn anything. It's why our educational system is pretty much broken. But it's not just for black people that the educational system is actually broken, but it's also pretty much for just anybody who, you know, go into United States education because all of it is just terrible, really. And so basically students nowadays are just a byproduct of a really bad education that are done by teachers. Anti-racist math educators destruct the ways that they have been taught math to learn and teach math differently. Design a culturally sustaining math space. Center echo mathematics. What the fuck is echo mathematics? Make rigor accessible through strong and thoughtful staff folding. Prepare students of color to close the gap in access to STEM fields. Embrace and encourage multiple and various ways of sharing, showing, and communicating knowledge. Support students to reclaim their mathematical ancestry. I really hate this idea of closing the racial gap for the STEM field. Because to me at least, if you're actually dedicated, if you're actually talented to do mathematics or sciences or like whatever, you should actually be in that STEM field by your own merit. It seems to apply that if you don't actually, of course, have enough students to actually pass math, that you probably need to use some sort of quotas to actually get more people into those kind of jobs. And that, to me, goes against the principle of equality of opportunity. Because right now, from what I've seen from that text right there, 
it seems to apply that you need equality of outcomes to actually achieve that goal. And I'm absolutely against the idea of that. Absolutely. Critical practice, shifting towards anti-racist math education. Teachers, in order to shift your practice towards anti-racist math education, it's necessary to critically examine the ways in which white supremacy culture penetrates your own math classrooms. These exercises are designed in a year-long process of reflection and planning in order to identify the ways in which your practice may perpetrate white supremacy culture and create a plan for dismantling using anti-racist approaches. Each month, you will complete a set of exercises as outlined in the calendar. You will complete a five-step cycle as follows. Number one, engage with the ways that white supremacy culture show up in math classrooms. Number two, on your current classroom practice to identify the ways in which they perpetrate white supremacy culture. Number three, plan to dismantle white supremacy culture by creating a goal that incorporates specific anti-racist practices. Number four, act with accountability by carrying out the plan. Number five, reflect on the ways in which your practices align with anti-racist anti math education. <laughs> Again, it is so funny to me we're still talking about white supremacy culture, even though white supremacy culture is probably like a small, 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 small minority in comparison to the rest of the culture. Most people that now white supremacists, most people are not white supremacists. So, a matter of fact, the fact that you guys are pushing this sort of idea that somehow, like, you know, everything wrong is white people and we need to actually raise the racial tension because of white people, that stuff to me is actually going to create more white supremacists in the long run in comparison to actually treating people the same. Because you're doing this on Cartoon Network, you guys are doing it in, like, these various job places for employees to actually discriminate against white people, so the more and more you actually push and try to demonize white people, the more likely you would actually create more white supremacists that way. But that's my general observation. November, how am I authentically including black, Latino, fuck you guys for using Latinx, and multilingual students? Good math teaching is considered an antidote for mathematical inequity for black, Latino, not Latinx, multilingual students. Does reinforce either or is thinking by reinforcing stereotypes about the type of mathematical education that certain groups of students achieve. It allows the defensiveness of Western mathematics to portray without addressing underlying causes of why certain groups of students are underperforming, a characterization that should also be interrogated. It also proposes that good math teaching is about a Eurocentric type of mathematics devoid of cultural ways of being. You know, when I first read that statement, I immediately thought about this video that comes directly from like South Africa, where basically like a girl was claiming that you could actually shoot lightning bolts because of her ways of thinking, because of that Eurocentric thing is actually garbage, according to her. I'm sorry, but there's like a clear difference between trying to help students and trying to entertain lunacy like that girl in that video with the lightning ball coming out your hand stuff. Because you see, math and science should actually depend on the evidence first. We should not entertain ideas that, you know, oh my god, my culture is different and blah 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 blah. No. We should actually focus on code objective facts. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 equals 4. Period. Why supremacy culture show up in mathematics when students are required to show their work? Math students ask students to show work so that teachers know what students are thinking, but that censors the teacher's need to understand whether to have the student learning. It becomes a crush for teachers seeking to understand what students are thinking and less of a tool for students in learning and to how to do the process. Thus, requiring students to show their work reinforces worship of the written word <laughs> as well as parentalism. If your teacher actually requires you to show all your work, I would actually advise you to probably, you know, say after school to actually ask the teacher how to do math problems 
or go to a private tutor or some sort of friend to actually help you out to write all the problems out. Because yes, it's true, there are some teachers that require you to actually write your answers and how you get the answer. And there are some teachers who are not like that way. It depends largely on who you're being taught at and what school you're going to. But at the same time, this sort of idea that, you know, this is actually proof of, you know, white supremacist culture by having a course teacher requiring you to write your answers down. I'm sorry, I don't really buy it for one single second. April, how do I facilitate deeper understanding? The focus is on getting the right answer. The concept of mathematics being purely objective is unequivocally false, and teaching it is even less so. Upholding the idea that there's always right and wrong answers perpetrate objectivity as well as fear of open conflict. Translation to dumb. 1 plus 1 is not 2, 1 plus 1 is 3, and of course 2 plus 2 is not 4, 2 plus 2 is 5. This is crazy. This is absolute lunacy. And they're actually gonna go at their students with this sort of crap? Are you serious? Like there is obviously objective answers for math. To say that there's like no objectivity for math is pure lunacy. And there you have it, that's the whole entire thing. And of course, in the bottom, they have like the sources for other claims. And of course, it's like lunacy, all of it is like absolute lunacy. And it's kind of sad that our classrooms are gonna actually have this sort of stuff for mathematics. Because apparently like, you know, there's no such thing as objectivity that somehow if you were to like, you know, get the right answer or do certain things, that's actually evidence of white supremacy culture is pretty much lunacy. Absolute lunacy. So the best way, of course, to push back against this sort of stuff is by actually participating in the meetings for like the parent stuff. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.